Stanford University. Greetings, my friends, and a warmest welcome. Our practice session yesterday included foundational practices. When I say foundational practices, I'm not talking about beginning practices. Foundational practices are essential practices that I do all the time myself personally, and my students and my advanced students do them as well. It's very interesting in the systems of Qigong and its connection with the Dharma and with Taoist practices that there are so many forms of our practice. There are literally thousands of forms and many, many different traditions. Often practices like we're doing are taught in what's called sets. And sets are sequences of practice that have been curated over time by families and lineage traditions and the Shaolin and the Wudang, many different traditions of these kinds of practices. And they kind of keep them in this beautiful container of the, of the set of practices. So it's interesting that you have access now to very many forms of Qigong and these practices that I also referenced as somatic, because that's our word for it, of being in the body, connecting with this language of feeling that we call Qigong. But the fundamental practices, the foundational practices, as I was saying, are relevant, and you don't need novelty all the time. Learning more and more forms doesn't necessarily help the value and benefit that's present for us in our Qigong. Yesterday, when we talked about establishing the practice, remember that I said working with just a few forms for just a few minutes can be very, very valuable. I remember practicing and studying with the Dalai Lama, and he would say when asked about how long should we practice, you know, should we be sitting in meditation for two or three or four hours a day? He said, no. Short periods of practice are very valuable. In our modern life, we often don't have long periods of time to practice contemplative arts. Our interest in them helps to create the space in which that practice can take place. And it's my experience that when you feel called to practice, when it, when it really draws you in because you're feeling the value of it or you're establishing for yourself whether or not it has value, that time is very important and well spent. So we bring ourselves to the practice, do a little bit, kind of develop in the, in the principles and in the forms, the energy of the practice, and then we can assess more clearly later on down the line, a few days, a few weeks. As I said yesterday, I often have my students do a 21-day cycle. So if you're interested in establishing the practice, you can take any of these forms or all of the sequences that we're doing. We're practicing in the standing meditation forms for approximately 30 minutes, 35 minutes. So when we do that, that gives you an opportunity to maybe pull out a few things that you like, a few of the practices, a few of the forms that we're working with and investigate them for yourself. Practice, you, you know, you can use a, use a timer 
Almost everybody has timers on their phones these days, and those can be very valuable to kind of set the boundaries of a, of a specific framework for practice. So five or ten minutes, and then there's no need to stop there. If you want to go on, feel you feel called to do that, then by all means, uh, do so. The foundational practices, the radiant body breathing, the pulsing from the core that we did yesterday, the practice of integrating breath, these foundational forms, absolutely wonderful, and can be taken separately or woven together, as we have in these sequences, uh, over time, and uh, make for yourself a little set of Qigong. Talking about foundational practices, the ones that we've done, the ones that we'll do today, and I was saying that you can take them individually or as a sequence. There's no particular magic or mystery to the sequence, although you may find that some practices work better together. And I really invite you to investigate that for yourself. You may find that certain practices, like what we began with yesterday and that we'll begin with again today in just a moment, the radiant body breathing, that's a wonderful practice to do when you get up any time during the day and also a great practice to do before getting into bed, going to sleep. It's a calming, settling, and centering practice. Now today, our focus is going to be with the forms of our Qigong and working with the synchrony of, mov of movement and the breath. When I talked about our practice and how it creates a unity in our own systems, I said there are three essential aspects to it. One is bringing ourselves to the practice, our intention for health, for well-being, for development, the other is working with the breath. So working with the breath in this way, we encourage the cultivation of the qualities of the breath. And so in a certain way, you're learning how to breathe. Of course, you already know how to breathe, but the, the engagement with, with the qualities of the breath, not unlike pranayama for those of you who are yoga practitioners, the approach in the Qigong through the Taoist and Buddhist system is slightly different. And I try to point out those characteristics and features as we move through it. So we have the intent and the working with the qualities and the cultivation and development of the breath, and then the skill of the action. The skill of the action is not a rigidity in relationship to the expression of the form. When we practice something as simple as radiant body breathing, it's going to be expressed a little bit different in your body than mine and the person next to you uh, on the screen or in person. So you have that opportunity to, to really feel through and not look for some kind of perfect way or some right way to do it. Yes, there are guidelines, and I give you those guidelines. You understand that. And then we integrate the practices and the subtlety of the movements gradually. Often, many of these refinements that happen will happen intuitively with you. You'll see how to relax, how to settle the spine a little bit in this you'll feel the up and down movement, and everything that we're doing has a pulsing quality to it. Now, in the synchrony of the breath with the forms that we're using, why is that important? Why is the connection of movement with the breath so important? Earlier, I used the word unity, and many of you know that the word for yoga in its translation is to, to unify, to, to bring together in wholeness. And in a sense, that's exactly this. This is a kind of yoga, different culture. 
and different method, but same result. So in our, in our practice, it's not just holding on to the ancient, and it's not giving up the ancient for the modern. <laughs> it's an integration. So what's happening in our practice gradually is a holistic integration that I often refer to as coherency. And this coherency is a feeling uh, on that level of the systems of the body coming into harmony. You hear the word harmony all the time in the mystic arts and the martial arts. In fact, Aikido, the I part is that essential greater sense of harmony with the universe. So as we're practicing, we're developing and embodying, not later on, not 20 years down the road, not after we're enlightened, if we ever do become, it is the, it's the, it's being in the present and really feeling and allowing what is present to express itself and to find that uh, ultimate satisfaction of being here and allowing the gradual and sometimes sudden, but generally and uh, hopefully a gradual development into uh, openness, a kind of wisdom, a kind of insight that includes, as I was talking with you yesterday, about the capacity for empathy, the capacity for the wisdom of compassion. So that's the aspect that we're going to be cultivating and working with today. So let's come into our standing forms now. And remember, as I said yesterday, please listen to your body first and foremost. If you need to sit down any time during the course of our practice for the next uh, 20, 25 minutes or so, please feel free to do that. And I'm going to guide us into a sequence that includes a recognition and presencing of our principles. Thank you very much. We begin with our standing meditation posture, and this, in fact, is not a, a rigid posture. Before we come into the relative stillness of the Wu Qi, we want to make sure that we can feel through the body, and one of the ways of doing that is a form that you are most certainly aware of, and that's moving in the hips. So we just move a little bit, circular fashion, range of motion underdone. Relax the breath downward and ease. So in this practice, the, what potentially is taking place is the connection, the fluid connection, the energetic connection, the structural connection of upper body through the hips, pelvis, down through the legs, earth connection. And that earth connection is supportive both downward and upward. Let's change direction. Remember, small action, just stay present in feeling while we relax the breath. That's the idea. Good, stay with it for a moment. All right, as you stabilize and let the hands come down, we're going to do just a light shake out. And as we shake out, just a light pulse of the whole body. You're not shaking vigorously, but just letting everything move in this little bit of pulse. Good. Now, just that easy. Let that settle. We return to the elements of alignment in our standing meditation posture, which is called Wu Qi in the Chinese traditions. Settle, feel, relax and soften the face as I guided you yesterday, softening the field of the eyes to let the peripheral vision be soft and open, relaxing the muscles of the face, the jaw, the throat, and resting the tongue naturally in the mouth.
and see if you can feel in this alignment the sense of that central column, the earth connection, opening up, soft and open crown of head. Nice and easy here. That's the idea. Just feeling. Nothing to do, nowhere to go, no one that you need to be right now. <laughs> Just us here. That's good. Unique and unusual, is it not, just to allow being. Excellent. Now, our first practice, like it was yesterday, is to come into radiant body breathing. So hands flow out to the side, turn the palms up here. In-breath, hands facing inwards towards the body, and settle down. Bend your knees, a little presence in the heels that stretches and opens the sacral lumbar area. Beautiful, natural, easy spinal stretch. Yeah, good. In breath. This begins the synchrony of breath and motion. In our seated practices yesterday, we started to cultivate, cultivate the qualities of the breath. And we can continue to do so here in this beautiful merger of the rivers of breath and movement. So there's no hurry, there's a, a smoothness through the whole system, and this helping to build strength and that coherency, that unity through every cell. All right, let's do one more cycle of the breath. As you exhale this time and come to rest into your wuchi, your standing meditation, Find the sense of settling, natural alignment. Ease. Nothing to do. Good alignment. Let's do the other practice of radiant body breathing, which is breathing up the central column, breathing up that central channel, one hand in front of the other here, and then breathing up, flowing up. Fullness of in-breath, openness in the crown of the head. Let that settle down. As you settle down, be maybe 60% of your weight in the heels, not lifting the toes up, and flow up as if breathing from the earth opening like a fountain into space, encouraging this natural, subtle energy circulation. This too, asynchrony, is it not? Movement connected with the flow of the breath. Your rhythm is unique to you. Very good. Let's do one more cycle here. That's it. Smooth. Let the transition from this movement to the relative stillness of our standing meditation be smooth, coherent. And this coherency is not an on and off state. It is a gradually developing. Oh, 
Okay, very good. We're going to come from here. Yesterday we practiced three centers breathing and then came into pulsing from the core. We're going to come right into pulsing from the core today because it is a skill that will serve you well throughout your life as you bring your, your attention to it, bring your breath to it, and feel the opening and closing. It's as, as if the vertebrae were doing something like this. Not quite that dramatic, but you know what I'm saying? There's a little bit of movement forward and a little bit of movement back. So along the whole length of the spine, it is a release. It's a liberation. So this is a practice that nurtures brain and nervous system, nurtures the fabric of the spinal column. And I often like to, uh, to quote my friend, Dr. Dan Siegel, who many of you know. He's just a phenomenal human being. And he says that the nervous system, what we call our nervous system, is the brain distributed throughout the body. Here's a little koan for you. Nothing to believe, just consider, you know. What does he mean by that? Well, of course, there's all this fabric in this beautiful river of highly conductive magnetic material that we call the spinal cord. So when we do these practices and do them in an underdoing, kind of undulating, ocean creature kind of way, we're coming back to that primal nature, not forcing any action in there, but allowing the gentleness to open, expand. And the gentleness is what actually moves more deeply into the fabric of both the column and the nervous system. So this is a brilliant practice, a, a beautiful Qigong that's been practiced in various ways over uh, centuries. We practice this by bringing the backs of the hands together and taking a moment to feel kind of a roundness. So the shoulder blades are spread out on your back and the hips and pelvis drop down. You bring the chin in and it feels like the stretch is lightly up and lightly down and the front part of your body is a little bit concave and of course the back is round. That's why we call it a bow, the bow of the spine here. So find your way into this and just breathe a little bit easily. So as you wrap forward, the chin in, tailbone settled down, you really have the beginning of such a, a wonderful spinal health practice. Now keep your shoulders relaxed here and take an in-breath and lightly lengthen. Roll back a little bit. Settle the palms down to the side. There's your exhale. Wrap forward and here's your in-breath. And we begin the feeling this smooth elliptical pulse this too having a synchrony of the rhythm of the breath with the skill and flow of the motion. Yeah, that's it. Remember that principle of underdoing range of motion? See if you can just get into feeling the space of the body in this pulse. It makes all the difference in how the pulsing movement not a mechanical one so much. The smooth lips opening, settling. Make sure your, your face stays relaxed and uh, your eyes easy, with your eyes open, it's just soft, soft gaze. Good, very good. Let that settle downward now. And settle and feel the resonance of that gentle but profound movement through the field of your body. 
for each of us, there'll be unique sensations. It doesn't have to be dramatic. It can be subtle, often is very subtle. Just a moment of that poise and stillness. We now do the complementary action. Remember, we're going to take the hands and open the front channel of the body. So you can feel like from the tip of your chin down through the field of the throat, through the heart, solar plexus, abdominal field, down into the basin of your pelvis, right down to the base there. That line open, relaxed. And as I said yesterday, this gesture of openness and vulnerability is unique. We don't often stand like this, present ourselves like this. You just feel that openness, the safety of it here at this moment. And now we take a breath in, lengthen a little bit, wrap forward so the backs of the hands incline. We make that bow, but this time we settle down with the exhalation. Draw the palms back, and the ellipse happens in this direction. Exhale. Stay with it. When you're doing range of motion, let this be amazingly simple to do. You're flowing up, you're feeling that openness through the heart, all the way over the top of the head, down the front, in breath. Good. Another cycle or so, just to feel a letting go, kind of really presencing that principle of underdoing range of motion to stay in the fluid state kind of primal oceanic state of this movement through the whole system, whole body. Very nice. Good. This time as the hands come down, you just return in that clear and transparent way. Let go and allow whatever releases from here. It may be very subtle. Just let it be. So good. Very good. Well done. That's good. Pulsing from the core, the pulse, that movement. And it is um, optimized by doing what we don't expect, and that is underdoing, letting it be soft and fluid through this movement. In developing strength, we're not used to that as a modality. It's always about the resistance, the isometric, the the resistance, the acetonic, whatever, whatever the gesture is, and those are all good ones. Yeah, I, I swim, I occasionally lift weights and do various kinds of movements like that and to great benefit. So it's not like the qigong is a replacement for all of that, but we in our culture do very little of this kind of deep introspective kind motion through the whole system to bring about coherency, to bring about that kind of, that poise of presence. We're going to learn a practice now that's called full spinal breathing. And this works in the same way, but a little bit different. And this one has that also the wrapping forward and back, and gradually you'll be able to feel it through the whole space of your spinal column. Underdoing the effort, just being present, listening and respecting your body as we practice these kinds of things optimizes the benefit. So full spinal breathing begins like this. You'll take your hands, we'll practice the, the uh, components of the practice and then weave it into a flow. 
So you're going to take an in-breath, and as you do an in-breath with the palms up, the elbows come kind of back. You're not trying to go way back. It's just right about here so you can feel the chest and the heart and the sternum just gently lift. And then we're going to come into a gesture. Watch this first before doing it. It's like, it's like a diving gesture, like I'm getting ready to dive, except the backs of my hands are spiraling, and that opens and spreads the field and the material of the back and the, the scapula and so on, your wings, your shoulder blades, spreads them out. When you make this shape, you let the tailbone settle down, the chin to come in and feel the length of the cervical vertebrae upward. So once again, you have a bow in this movement. And our gesture is in-breath here, and exhale smoothly into the bow, like so. Let's practice this together. A wonderful Qigong practice called full spinal breathing. Here it is. Again, with the palms up here at the sides, I'll show from a couple of different angles. In breath and X. Good, in breath. That's it, very nice. That's the flow and the qualities that we're working with are underdoing range of motion to stay present in feeling and allow that wrap that motion, the synchrony of the breath and the action to be in harmony, to help to build that essential harmonious coherency through the whole organism. No hurry. We're just going to stay in this for just a, one more minute, just feeling that openness. Celebrating that fullness with the in-breath, releasing and letting go, feeling the bow of the spine. Tailbone settles down, head naturally opens out. Good. Good. Let's do one more cycle together like this. Press, lengthen, spiral. This time in breath and let that settle down. As we return to Wu Chi for just a moment, this is such a vital part of our Qigong. The Wu Qi is not just waiting for the next thing to happen. It is the moment where the system takes the energy and information on that very subtle subconscious level and begins to integrate it because the intention is that quality of poise, health, harmony, Okay, great, wonderful. When you do your own practice, if you do, and I hope you do, find some value in it, you can take a little bit more time to do your standing practice, do your meditation in between the flow of motion and the settling in stillness. We're going to do one more practice here in the standing form, and this one is called the equinox. This has a couple of components that we'll practice and then weave it together as a flow. This is a beautiful motion that has to do also with what I often refer to as the spinal spiraling staircase. So we have a few different ways we move the spine, right? We can unfold this way, there's the lateral motion, and then there's the spiral motion. So I talked yesterday about 
taking care of your body and especially the spine if you have conditions, scoliosis or other injuries, underdoing range of motion, really listen to that. Don't push, don't push at all. <laughs> Just feel that and allow your movement to be cogent with what's appropriate for your body. So the first aspect of the equinox is what is called folding in the qua. The qua is the inguinal area here in the hip. And when you lightly fold the weight to one side, you're not leaning to that side. You want to feel the inguinal area and lightly feel the fold there, but the alignment is between shoulder, hip, and bottom of the foot. So you'll notice my alignment here is like that. It's not leaning. And then I can just bring it back to, to the center. Very subtle, yes, but important that that fold, and you practice this folding with me right now, is from the center to the side. And that natural vertical alignment, shoulder, hip, bottom of the foot, return back to the center, balance, fold to the other side. Good, got that. Very nice. So we're going to include next in the movement, which is going to look like this. I'm going to review with you uh, another aspect of the practice so we can weave it together. We can weave it together. <laughs> so here's going to be a pulsing breath here in the field of the solar plexus. That's an in-breath and that's an out-breath, and you'll notice that's in the center. But then we're going to spiral to the side moving from the base of the spine, just a little bit to the side, that spiraling staircase, base, then into the thoracic vertebrae, and then finally a little bit into the cervical vertebrae, so the head will move. It looks like this, I'm taking a breath, and then spiral, base, middle, and upper, and then draw back into a pulse here. The movement is not dramatic. It's not like you have to go to 90 degrees. You can go to 60 degrees or so. Feel the base, middle, and upper. Folding in the quad, nice alignment. Keeps the stability of your stance. Then in-breath here. This particular practice actually has lots of levels, lots of dimensions, but it's good to start here. Get this and you, you have your doorway into this spiraling practice. Very healthy for the spine. Let's do it together. Just practice a little bit. You'll feel your way into it. So here we have an in-breath. This is my left side, so I'm folding lightly to the left. This hand pushes down and this hand crosses, extends. In-breath. Fullness of in-breath, no hurry. In-breath. Fold to the side, not lean to the side. Good alignment. In-breath expands. Take your time not to hurry into the extension. Exhale. Fullness of exhale. Feel the fullness there. And then in-breath, fullness of in-breath here in the center. Fold, extend, release, in-breath. Good. Very good. We're going to complete on this cycle here. As the hands come back here into this embrace posture, turn your hands over, let your hands come down. In breath, integrating breath. This is with the palms facing down. Settle the whole body down. Lightly press and lengthen. Release, let go neutral and begin again.
And one last. Good. This time, as we complete, and as we're completing our sequence, I invite you to bring one hand over the other, and the thumbs are about in the navel area below this field. Just let this settle here for a moment. Breath natural. All those qualities that we cultivated are likely very naturally present right now. Yeah, feel that. Soften the space of your face, your head. Feel the settling down and the trusting of letting go to this intelligence of your being. Okay, very good. Well done. Nicely practiced. Good practice. We're going to come now and come to our seated practice, our seated Tao Yin, and then towards the end we'll take some time for some discussion, some dialogue, questions if you have them. Wonderful. So we take just these brief moments to settle into a natural alignment of sitting, whether you're on a chair, on the sofa, on a cushion, wherever you are, you feel the base of the body, the hips and the pelvis downward is settled here. And make sure that you take a moment to feel through the legs so you're not holding, you're not gripping. Can you allow the base of the spine to have a natural sense of openness and length. So the upper body is relaxed and poised in this gesture of dignity that we call our meditation posture. So we're relaxed here. You take the, the time, the moments to settle in, feel, the rhythm of the breath as you gently inventory the internal space, the boundaries of your skin, letting the structure be both in integrity, in its natural strength and alignment, but without unneeded tension, and certainly not laxity, not collapse. Relaxation is poise, dynamic relaxation. Very good. The continuity, the Zan Shin aspect of being in a contemplative space, being in a meditative space, the flow between motion and stillness the space of awareness itself is unbroken. Yes, the change between relative motion and relative stillness. The internal awareness is unfettered, unbroken. So the practice that we're going to begin with, the Tao Yin for today, is called the Spinal Spiraling Staircase in the Seated Form. So what we're going to do is draw the hand back here like this. Take a breath in the center and spiral from the base through the middle spine and finally just a little bit into the head, completing your exhalation. With the in-breath, release both your hands back to the center, fullness of in-breath, and to the other side. Base first, then mid-spine, finally head and neck and then you just release naturally in the opposite order. In-breath, exhale, spiral, base, middle, upper. Release that breath, in-breath. Fullness of in-breath here, exhale. In-breath. Center, we'll do that one more time on each side. Exhale, spiral. And breath. Exhale. 
Horizont. Return to center, to your natural gesture of uh, our contemplative practice here, whatever that may be. Feel the natural openness of the central part of the body, the central column. As I said yesterday, the base here, the waist and below, is naturally settled, is grounded. The upper body has the slight feeling of lift, just like a flower to the sun. Effortless being, but not collapse. It's a gesture that will gradually develop strength and your ability to sustain this, this form for your contemplative practice. natural poise and alignment with the qualities of the breath that we began cultivating in our practice session yesterday. The qualities of the breath being soft and fine, smooth, quiet, always natural, but feeling the abdominal field naturally open and expand with that in-breath and the pulse of the exhalation. As at first, you may feel a little bit of effort in that as you begin to let go, really let the breath have it. Life breathing life. Good. From the space of the ease of our practice of the cultivation of the breath and the qualities of the breath, we let go into the space of mindful presence, essential mindfulness, which is letting go into the space of awareness itself. Sometimes that's referred to as the deep witness Awareness of awareness. Many wonderful, beautiful names throughout the various cultures. Letting go. You may be present to the feeling of the senses, of the movement of the mind with thought idea. Emotion, let that be exactly as it is. No holding on, no pushing away for these moments. And if you care to, you can bring the kindness of your attention just a little forward of the phenomena of your body, mind, organism, spirit, into that space of pure awareness. This is the space without an object, without subject. It's that harmony, that merger, natural being. And as my Tibetan teachers often say in guiding meditation, they'll say, just rest, rest in being. Doesn't mean a sleepiness. There's certain quality of vibrant awareness that's without tension. Awake, clear, and open.
Yes, nothing to figure out here, nothing to know in the traditional way. It's letting go into being. Okay, today we practiced with that synchrony of the qualities and the development, the cultivation of the breath with skillful movement, with these forms that are both ancient and modern. They're modern because we're doing them now. <laughs> and they have been cultivated and changed and evolved over the centuries in the various contemplative centers throughout the world. We're very fortunate to have access to these amazing teachings and also the teachings of science now, you know, so we understand neuroscience, we understand the brain and physiology, biology, astrophysics better than we ever have in some ways. So the merger and the integration of these disciplines of practice doesn't necessarily require degrees in every one. <laughs> you, want to, you want to develop and understand the foundations of these practices, and then you can apply the implications of them and the inferences of them. So today breath, the cultivation of the breath, the synchrony, why? To help to build coherency through the system. And that coherency has a quality of resonance that is ongoing, that, that moves like everything else moves in life, that opens and closes, it gets more deep and rich, and uh, then sometimes feels like, where did it all go? <laughs> But you bring yourself back to practice, and that's why practice is the central uh, aspect of all of these trainings. Everything that you learn from Peter Levine and, and all the other wonderful teachers that are on Contemplation by Design this year and other years, you lean into them, listen to what they have to say, and, and find the beautiful resonance and the relevancy that it has for each of us. So, good evening, Tia. Wonderful to be here. Thank you for opening now to questions. We have one question that regards the process of completion of a movement practice, and that in many of the contemplative stillness practices, there are gestures that are could be considered sealing, S-E-A-L-I, you know, like your, your or um, closing the the contemplative time and then transitioning into the more day-to-day uh, -day, uh, frame of mind. In the practice of the contemplative movement arts, you offered the opening and the uh, wei qi. What about at, when you're ending your practice? Could you speak to that? Yes, certainly. Great question. And we often will come to that gesture that we did at the end of our sequence today of settling down into the field of the hara or the lower dantian. And this is a wonderful settling. You'll notice that many of the formal gestures of meditation have kind of settling or a sealing into this uh, space of the body. The question of sealing is a little bit of an advanced aspect. It's not that 
were that you can't handle it. Of course you can, <laughs> but it, it just requires a little bit more, I think, uh, context and instruction to understand really how that is. Naturally settling down here in this field, a wonderful gesture. Also, I'll often complete with this mudra here in front of the heart and settling in the field of the heart. That's also a beautiful completion gesture that we do, that yogis do often, and that we often do in Qigong too. So settle in the field of the heart, the radiance of that field, and then settle in the space of the, of the lower dantian or the hara. That kind of trust of letting go into and through your body, into this energetic, dynamic field of being. So it's not letting go of the head, it's just inclusive of the whole uh, essence and uh, dynamics of our organism. How's that, Tia? Very helpful, thank you. In the same uh, line of thought, could you speak to the positioning and focal field of the eyes during practice? Yes, what a great, important question. In martial arts, in the, uh, in the advanced practices especially, what we're talking about is what's often referred to in, in Qigong too and, and in meditation, soft eyes. Soft eyes doesn't mean blurry. It means the eyes are relaxed and open and the sense of that the peripheral vision is open and relaxed. We often use the, the, the organ of the eyes to look specifically, and sometimes we need to do that. But often in moving through space, and often even in looking at a document or something, if your eyes are soft and open, you can take in more and there's less strain in the space of your eyes. So soft eyes is natural eyes. And you are, um, you're, you're present with the peripheral vision, not as a gaze so much, but just as a natural way of orientating, orienting the, the, the organs of the eyes to, uh, to view and to see. You're actually able to take in a lot more to respond more appropriately when the eyes are relaxed rather than, than focused. And then this focusing that, that people do, and sometimes in their devices too, <laughs> Relax. Let that. Let your eyes be soft, so that you don't strain, and it's not like the tunnel of vision forward. This is important in our in our time, is it not, Tia? That that uh, working with devices, whether it's a laptop or whether it's your your phone, um, we we tend to kind of tighten in there. So soften, and see if you can't appropriate the same information <laughs> in this more relaxed way. Thank you. Moving from focusing on the eyes to the feet, we have a specific question uh, regarding the Wei Qi opening stance. What is weight distribution in the feet? Very smart question, I have to say. And it does change. There are dynamics of movement and as I said at the beginning, these are layered practices. So if I gave you all the instructions for everything, it would just be, I would be talking way too much. But now that you've asked, then it's an important to, to feel in whole body breathing and in this pulse that we do, that often a good place to start is that 60% that I referenced forward to the front part of the feet and 60% in the exhalation back towards the heels. So you're not lifting your toe up or lifting the heel up. The, the feet stay grounded, but in the in-breath, the front part of the foot is in Chinese tradition and Chinese medicine uh, called the bubbling well or the bubbling spring. And that connection in the front part has a lifting, opening energy from the earth. Now that sounds like metaphysics, but when you, when you begin to practice like that and work with the breath in the, all the ways that we've done, especially radiant body breathing, you can 
lightly move forward to the front part of the foot for the in-breath, and you move then through neutral feet into the exhalation and lightly settle uh, in that pulse, maybe 60% uh, max. But what that allows you to do in moving a little bit forward and back is allow the whole body to have the sense of breathing, of the whole body have the sense of that motion connected with the flows of the breath, the in-breath and the out-breath. So in other uh, more in-depth practices related to some of, the, some of the traditions that I teach, I'll really focus on that forward and back. And I introduced it in some of the forms that we did, and I'll continue to reference it. So a little bit forward, a little bit back. In other words, you're not just stable and, and trying to hold the legs stiff or still. Everything is breathing. Everything does breathe, <laughs> right down to the subatomic level. Everything is pulsing and moving. And when we do this, I referenced also to you tonight the, the kind of the primordial nature, aquatic nature of this movement. When we come into that, there's a real healing modality that's part of, of moving and breathing like that. Yeah, it's a practice. You don't, you don't do that all the time. You don't float down the street at the grocery store. <laughs> well, maybe you do sometimes, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You, you practice with this, and it has a resonance. It has a way of, of positively impacting the whole organism, especially the brain and nervous system. How's that? Beautiful. Th very clear imagery. Thank you. Very clear instruction. And again, staying with the feet, what is the guidance around the quality of shoe or whether to be barefoot and just speak to that? Yeah, sure. Of course. Um, it depends. It depends on the time. It's not always the right thing to be barefoot in, in the grass or whatever. You need to take care. Um, uh, it's nice to practice sometimes barefoot in the grass or on the sand at the, at the beach and, or wherever. And other times it's fine to wear uh, something on your feet, to wear, wear shoes. The energy moves through the material because it's of a, a much finer frequency. So chi is a very fine frequency. You can learn gradually to feel that and um, shoes won't impede your, your intake or your grounding of your chi through your feet. That's important. That's a very good question, actually. And consistent with that, what about large belt buckles? Well, <laughs> there, there is the space of the, of the waist, and it is called... Um, in Chinese medicine and Qigong, it's called the Dai Mai, D-A-I, Dai Mai, M-A-I. Mai is kind of like the band or the, the, uh, the meridian, the, pass, the passage, passageway. So belt buckles, I don't know. You know, I personally prefer uh, n not to use them, although... Um, uh, it, it can be constraining. You have to figure out for yourself if wearing, a, if wearing a belt is absolutely essential and a big belt buckle, you know, maybe you take it off for your Qigong practice and wear it to, uh, to the concert or to the restaurant or <laughs> coffee shop, whatever, you know. So I don't think I have any particular thing to say about that other than you want to let the whole body breathe, and in the practice time, maybe be good to take that off or something a little more loose, allow the, uh, the sides to open and breathe. I'll say one more thing, uh, Tia, in relationship to this. So we've started to practice what's called natural abdominal breathing, and I've brought forward some of the dynamic qualities that are present in that, a relative fullness, a relative uh, evenness, not contrived, natural, soft, fine, smooth, you know, quiet. Those are cultivated practices primarily for what when we're doing these 
contemplative practices of meditation as qigong, and also in the formal or informal gestures of, uh, of our meditation practice. It's not like a supposed to be all the time. Training is training, and life is life, and training is life too, so not to confuse. Thank you, Tisha. We have two questions about the breath that are asking the same uh, request for clarification regarding when and when not to breathe through both nose and mouth, when to breathe just through the nose. Yeah, sure. Um, generally speaking, for most of the practices, and not all, but most of them, we're breathing uh, with those qualities in our qigong, in and out through the nose. Of course, when I'm talking and guiding, I'm you know exhaling through my mouth. But that's just in the guidance. In what I practice myself, it's in and out through the nose, and that soft countenance, the relaxation through the mechanism of the breath, um, through the nose really allows the optimal nature of both anatomical breathing, physiological breathing, and what we might call spiritual or energetic breathing. That's that feeling of expansion that is past the, the boundaries of the physical lungs. So anatomical breathing, of course, we're feeling inside the organ of the lungs. Um, and that is, uh, that's really, uh, generally speaking, through uh, the nose. Also for meditation, too, it's easy. Your mouth, uh, if you were breathing in and out through your mouth, in meditation, your mouth would dry out. And um, that's why we also f have that sense of the feeling of that natural lift, the openness of the cervical vertebrae into the occipital area and that openness there. And that's contributed to by bringing the chin in just a little bit, not collapsing on the throat, but in service of that natural lift. So people will look sometimes at, at Zen practitioners, and if they're experienced, they have a look like, oh, they're sitting so rigid and stiff. But really, it's very soft, it's very refined, and the strength of the ligaments along the spine are developed gradually. They all develop gradually. So I added a little bit more to your question to you than through the nose, but it was it's in connection with the breath and the, and the gradual development of a functional form for uh, meditation. Thank you. In our closing question is to highlight the focus on the concept of cohering and coherence that you have illuminated. And if you'd speak to, uh, I know this is a question that could be answered broadly, but however you wish tonight, how the seven principles you presented in your earlier session directly support the cohering. Beautiful, great question. So of course the, the principles, and you can review them for yourself, and as you do, you'll understand that they are all part of a body uh, that, that overlay one another, that connect with each other, that are relevant to each other, that have uh, ways of, of natural interaction. So we start with that relaxed intention, being present, underdoing, range of motion, feeling openness, feeling poise, natural listening, listening and dynamic relaxation. So all of those contribute to the sense of fullness, of wholeness of our being. And when we practice like that in coherency of uh, breath and skillful motion, that's what builds the coherency. The integration of the principles that we've practiced with, connected with intention, skill, and breath. That builds unity. And the word I used in relationship to that is coherency. Remembering that coherency is not a set state like, 
I'm incoherent and I'm coherent. That's the nature of language. In the nature of reality of <laughs> coherency, it is a developing and evolving uh, being. So you can, you can feel coherency greater or less at certain times. And our practice helps to develop, um, embody, even embed to a certain degree into the fabric of our bodies, that feeling of wholeness. And everything changes. We're all in this fluid uh, motion of balance and, and harmony, relative harmony, relative coherency. But practice uh, increases that, increases that, that feeling so that when you settle in for practice or when you're in a, um, even a, a, a difficult conversation with someone, there'll be, you're, you'll find a way to be settling in your center a little bit more. You'll feel more connected, more coherent internally. Thank you, Tisha. Thank you for this evening's guidance and your wisdom. We look forward to being with you again on Sunday for the third guided practice event. Thank you. Thank you, Tia. Just a pleasure to be with you, and thank you for bringing together this beautiful uh, offering for, for everyone with the Contemplation by Design. Much appreciated. And thank you, everyone. Many blessings. Take good care and look forward to seeing you.